Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Pat Flynn Show. Hold on, let me take off this disgusting bathrobe that I'm—it's just just nasty looking, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, you had to see that, Dan. There we go. And you've got such a beautiful background that it's just yeah. I can't keep up. Anyways, we're back here with Dan John yet again for our weekly conversation. I was just telling Jan, uh, Jan, sorry, I can't, apparently I can't speak this morning. How much I've been enjoying just revisiting just just the just the old school strength manuals like Eugene Sandow and Arthur yeah. Saxon. One, they're just they're just hilarious to read. Like just the old school English just always cracks yeah. me up. Yeah. Um, but the perennial insights and wisdom. You know, I was reflecting on an episode just the other day, just going through some of Sax um, Sandow's work, and it's just like, dang, you know, like this guy didn't have all the peer reviewed research that we've had in the past couple of decades, but. He apparently didn't need it, <laughs> right? Like, it's like, yep, he, he gets it, you know, uh, lift weights, use progressive resistance, uh, have a good mindset. There you go. In the new book, Easy Strength, I, I quote uh, the guy who wrote Bosco, um, uh, Pascal, uh, Harry Pascal. And uh, Bosco was that guy with the big saucy mustache. And he was just, he was an upside down triangle. with huge, And, you know, he would always lift weights with one hand and the, the, the drawings and one of his workouts is uh, continuous clean and press, which was a standard warm up back in the day. Clean and press, clean and press, clean and press. And then you were warmed up. And then it's something like curl, row, squat, bench, deadlift. There's your workout. And I look at that. It's like people go, well, yeah, well, I wouldn't put the curl in that. Place. It's like, dude, this is from 19... Well, the, the funny thing about Harry, and it's, uh, this is something of historical importance, he died the week I was born. And many people think that we high-fived across the barrier and he gave me all of his insights. Pass the torch, slowly, right. Mm -hmm. Slowly giving them out. But, you know, you look at a workout like you look at uh, uh, York Barbell Club So It was program number four where you did one-arm snatch, one-arm clean and jerk, clean and press, snatch, clean and jerk. That was the whole workout, five, four, three, two, one. Now someone's gonna listen in and go. Would you well, would you do them in a in a in a circuit? No. Uh, so you do uh, like in the clean and jerk. You do five. Go heavy. Do four. Go heavy. Do three. Do two. Do one. It's that the the, the, the most basic ramp up in the history. And then and then move on to the next exercise. And then move on. You did Got your it. single with your heavy weight. And you move on to the next exercise. But you're right. You look at these programs and it's like, yeah, I think we can do better. But you know what? It, it's not like I, I don't know. It's it's not geometrically better. It's like yeah, maybe change the order. Right, like it's it's a matter of like maybe a little fine tuning. But I was yeah. like, you know, I was you know, and I was reading Sandel stuff on the episode, and and like it kind of made me laugh to think that I was critiquing any of his stuff because the man is infinitely stronger than I will ever be at the same time. You know, so it's like it's like, it's like probably I'm the idiot, <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Like like even though I might disagree with him about this little thing, at the same time, this was one of the strongest men to ever live, and generally everything he's saying is just absolutely true so like i'm not even going to bother with the nitpicking just just here you go right when tommy kona's book uh weightlifting olympic style came out a whole bunch of people attacked the book about a, uh, an off-season training program yet and, and it's just if you've ever done an off-season program it, they're all they're all just okay so you're gonna rip on a guy who was mr universe and a three-time olympic gold medalist your programming is better than a Mr. Universe who is also a three gold medalist and I think 72 world records or something like that. Other than those small little things, your experience is what, you know? And uh, I, I think we've talked about this before, Pat, you know, in my world, I'm kind of small and slender and, and, and undersized, but I'm freaking Shrek when I go to any kind of, uh, you know, gathering. And uh, Dan Fout said years ago, about Test Fest in LA. Never have so many people come together uh, to talk about lifting weights and so few ever appear to have actually ever lifted weights. <laughs> Never done it. <laughs> <laughs> Only at Test Fest. <laughs> well, the fact that it was called Test Fest, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. But uh, so I was, um, yeah, I was reading through uh, Sandow's uh, First off, I'm getting I'm getting meme bombed because I I put a typo in the episode name instead of secrets I said secrets or something like that so people yeah. are making fun of it and deservedly so, um, but it's just you know like he, it's funny like how much of the the questions back then are the same questions today like one of the first thing he addresses is what's the best time of the day to work out and he says 
it depends. When do you feel best? When's most convenient? Work out then. But then he says, if all else equal, here's my favorite piece of advice. First thing in the morning, stripped to your waist in the privacy of your own bedroom. Yeah. I've got that book. Uh, I did a little podcast about, uh, it's called Old School Diet Advice. Uh, this this person had gone online. Uh, it's okay to just riff like a, a little bit. Right? This is, I'm having fun. This is great. Yeah. Okay. So this this there was this article that really got a lot of traction last week. Uh uh, the roots of the 1200 calorie a day diet. And so the thing is, I own Dr. Lulu Peter's book. So I pulled the book out from 1915. And I and I looked at what this article attacking her, but what actually Lulu said. And there was such, well, to get to your point, Lulu recommends something that uh, Pavel recommends. Uh, you start every day with two hot cups of lemon water hot lemon water and then just like sandow hackam schmidt just about everybody she thought you should do 10 minutes of exercise if all you did was those now i don't think the hot lemon water has miraculous qualities except i mean i trust pavel pavel told me that yeah you know in, 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 you know, in soviet russia now it, you know it, it's an old school way of metabolizing things it also comes from the Ayurvedic traditions from India. So you've got, you've got the Soviets, you've got the Indians, uh, 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 India Indians, you've got all this, it, it, a New York uh, diet expert all saying drink hot water with lemon. Yeah, maybe, you know, but the 10 minute of exercise thing, if you just did those two things every day, mm -hmm. start your day with some hot water, exercise it. I mean, I'm not gonna say all your dreams come true, but that's not bad. But but a lot probably will. And you know, again, yeah, like the possibility of magical properties aside, most people most of the time aren't drinking enough water, anyways. So if nothing else, you'll probably just be more hydrated, which is a good thing, right? Sure. And here's the thing. and gentle listener, Dan is about to use hyperbole. Um, I do notice that when I drink the hot water with lemon, I do notice that it's gonna something that they the, the, the mucus in little Danny clears up a little bit. Yeah. It seems to, it, it's, uh, <clears throat> my dentist recommends tongue scraping. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's about to go odd here, folks. It just, if you're driving, just keep, keep your eye on the road. Mm -hmm. um, and so what you do is you scrape your tongue because that's where a lot of the bad bacteria lives. I mean, there's right. bacteria in there. And what I have noticed two things, uh, Pat, is that when I scrape my tongue after the morning after I made bad choices diet wise, and my choices are different than maybe your choices, I have much thicker tongue goo. But if I'm eating the way my body likes to eat, uh, if I, if for example, the days where I eat a lot of kimchi, sauerkraut, uh, fish, uh, lots of veggies, I have no tongue goo. Yeah, the, the filminess and the goop. And when I, drink that, when I drink the hot water with lemon, it seems to clear that channel down the, the, back, the back door here. Right. Uh, again, I'm not trying to say this is a miracle thing, but this is, this is 1950 mm -hmm. advice. Can I add one little thing from the book that I, uh, is please, very important? Please do, yeah. She recommended as part of breakfast, two eggs cooked in bacon fat, which is the way my mother cooked, okay? Mm. How many calories did she count two eggs in bacon fat? I, I don't know. It's It can't be that many. Well, she called it 40. In 2021, we'd probably say that's well into the hundreds. I would have guessed over 100. So one of the points about the book I'm trying to make is it's not what do you mean by 1,200 calories a day. It's by what did the author mean? When Hackenschmidt, Sandow, and those guys said, it's a general, you know, work for a moderate workout. You're, have you noticed the word moderate shows up? He says, after he says, strip to your waist and in, in the privacy of your bedroom, gentle listeners, yeah. not saying do this out in public. Yeah, he right. says, probably you'll be able to do your routine in 20 uh, minutes to half an hour. Right. And you'll notice the word moderate shows up a lot. Mm -hmm. But one of the things you have to say to yourself is when I say you're going to do these moderate things, what, what, the word I'm using in 2021, moderate, doesn't have the same meaning. I'm not sure what Sandow and Hack and those guys meant by moderate, but you have to make sure you read what they said mm -hmm. to understand what they meant. You know, very often back then you'll notice, did you get, a, did you notice they did a lot of just single sets? 
Yeah, a lot of low rep. They really do treat strength as more as really a form of practice, like working a musical instrument or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he he has a section too where he he answers a question like, "Should you perspire during your work during your workouts?" He's like, "That'll depend on your condition, but like if you don't, that's fine. That's that's totally fine." <laughs> so there's this, these two authors coming out with a book pretty soon where they argue that you need to practice to get stronger you need to practice the movements you want to get stronger in and i and i think i can't wait for this book out i i think Brilliant. i think the two authors are probably the two certainly the one the irish guy is probably the greatest mind in our, in our generation strikingly handsome too from right. what i hear <laughs> scary good looking but it's funny because all easy strength is is leaping back across mm -hmm. uh, time and saying we forgot about this and mm -hmm. And for gentle listeners, because I am a bit of a weightlifting historian, I can almost circle the events when it happened, and that'd be the rise of the anabolic steroids. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, and um, yeah. one other thing I want to get your thoughts on, I, I mentioned this in the in the podcast I did. Um, whenever I'm doing these solo podcasts, I'm always like, dang, this would be so much better at the end. But uh, mm -hmm. we can't have you every day of the week, can we? Okay. Pat, <laughs> can I say something right, real yeah. quick? Mm -hmm. How many things in life do you not just stop and think, by God, this would be so much better? with Dan, you know, you're walking and drinking coffee, drinking whiskey, the sun's going down and you're with your wife on a beautiful Jamaican beach, white sand. Don't you just turn her and you say, God, I wish Dan John was here. I, I got my, I, we're watching love. Actually. I got my arm around here. I'm like, I wish Dan John was here. With Dan, we could, we could Oreo, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I, no, it's so true. I've heard that. So many a cup of coffee with Dan. John. In fact, this ought to be something we should sell market, you know, Coffee with that. I love it. <laughs> but yes, I, I really did have that thought. And I was um, and I thought you would agree with this. We'll find out is this this unhelpful attitude of, of I guess, what, what we might call chronological condescension. Well, this guy was, you know, he was around in uh, 1875 and he didn't have hashtag science and uh, he's just yeah. an ignorant savage. So so what would he know? And just kind of turning the nose up at uh, any any anybody who kind of came before and like, look, it's easy to point to examples where people in past got things wrong, scientifically, morally, yeah. whatever. But to but to dismiss everything just seems it's so blatantly not just false, but but arrogant and unhelpful at the same time. And and it also just assumes that like we right now in this present moment somehow aren't getting anything wrong, which is obviously <laughs> incorrect. And there's so much we can learn by going back and looking into the tradition being critically reflective about it. Okay. say, okay, maybe they're a little off here, but yeah, this insight that really stands the test of time and we should go back to that. You see what uh, I'm saying? I am. You're, 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 uh, you're, you're preaching to the choir. If I had to come up with a cliche, you're, you're, you've nailed it. Exactly. And it's been something I have had to deal with in my uh, teaching in religious studies, which is education, theology in history, economics, uh, and obviously in strength and conditioning, probably the most, you know, uh, when I when I work over there in England, one of the one of the things uh, another professor always tells me, the first thing that he does when he gets an American research paper on weightlifting, is he doesn't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can have ten thousand footnotes at the end of your book, but then when you look at those studies they made, not one of them has any value. You know, you take twelve. 18 year old freshmen and you have half of them do one set of curls you have half of them do two sets of curls neither ne no one has ever done curls in this group and six weeks later you find no difference in curl strength between the two groups at the end of six weeks yeah because you took a bunch of novices mm -hmm. uh yeah and so the whole study is and it can really confuse people because then sometimes you get, and not just in strength, but nutrition too, you get these sort of systematic reviews that are systematic reviews of a dumpster. And it's like, I don't care how much you sift through a dumpster. All you're going to pull out of there is garbage. Right? And, and here's the thing too, and I hope we got it. You and I have to be a little careful. Uh, gentle listener, I'm not throwing all, under the bus all this new research. I'm just saying most of the time when someone said, when I finally get them to, I'll, I'll, I'll just say, because the guys I work with say I'm an alpha. You know, I'm a kind of a killer whale. I, all I ever want to know is what's, you know, the first time I met kettlebellers, what's the one thing you would, if you had to, what would you miss if you had to lose all your kettlebells? And literally Steve Maxwell, Cotter, uh, uh, Brett, uh, uh, Brett Jones said this too, grip strength. 
So if you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, you're going to lose some grip. Kettlebells are so good for the grip. Mm -hmm. That to me is, that's, that's why kettlebells are so good. You know, when I just finished that 10,000 swing challenge, I walked around for a few days with the Raptor hands, you know, a, a T-Rex hands, because my, my grip had been blown up in the 20 days. So what I want, I want that alpha, I want the killer whale insight. Mm -hmm. And the killer whale insight from Hackenschmidt, Sandow, Grimmick, oh, God, we can, uh, Bosco, uh, Paschal, I mean, all of those great writers in the past, uh, Willoughby, uh, almost universally, it's the practice of strength. Yes. The it's, the, it's the art and practice. It's going to the violin every day. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get stronger, you play the violin more in a sense than, than everybody else. I, Pat, I love this stuff. I and love you do, it. And you do the thing you want to get good at, right? These are Those are those perennial insights. By the way, Dan, um, this is episode 500 of the Pathlane Show. So... 500. Uh, five, we actually, it's actually more than 500 because I've had a number of bonus episodes, but this is the official 500th episode. So I don't know. I don't even know what to do or say about that, but I feel like it deserves something, at least a giveaway. I've got the Dan John DVDs. So, yeah. Um, but I just, yeah, that just, that just occurred to me. This is, I, I, you know, uh, first off, congratulations. That's, you know, I don't think people who are listening, uh, and, and this is no rip on the people listening, I don't think they realize the, um, I want to call it discipline because it probably is the right word, but the ability to sit down and do this work, you know, it's like when you knock out your five, if you'd write out 500 one page essays, uh, essays one to 20 are going to be kind of uh, fun and groovy. So there's going to be some grinds in there and congratulations to you, Patrick, because I know how hard it is to do the grind. It is. It, it can be a grind. I, it's a very rewarding enterprise and I thank uh, you and listeners greatly for all the support, but Hey, it's, it's work at the end of the day. That's I, I'll be at a conference or a workshop or even in my own kitchen. And someone will say, I want to, I want to have an online presence and I'll tell them, well, um, do you have a blog? Yes. I have two entries. How long the blog been up? Seven years. Well, then what you have is a tombstone. You don't have a, <laughs> you have a blog, you know, uh, <clears throat> and the ability to go in and answer questions and keep coming back and, <clears throat> spin an idea you know, you've probably you've probably said the same basic 50 things eh, 50 is probably too high five you know in the 500 episodes oh yeah you know yeah uh, complexes are good for fat burning uh eat vegetables drink water i, I can guarantee it right do the basic yeah a lot of what yeah. we we're all talking about on this episode yeah uh that's that's just honorable 500 gosh i don't I don't, the number doesn't leap into my head, but I don't think I've seen many podcasts with, I usually, I don't see triple digits when I do podcasts with other people. It's, it's, it is rare. And, and I guess, you know, um, not to flatter myself too much, but this podcast is not, is not very old, right? Uh, I just, I just have a fairly high frequency of getting episodes out. Yeah. Um, but there is something, and here's the theme we might be able to tie this into fitness is I remember when I started, something I like to look up is like, what's the, What's the threshold that if you get past that threshold, your chances of general success are, are greatly improved? You actually talk about this for longevity. Like, I forget what the age is, but like, if you make it past what, like 25 or 27, like you'll probably yeah, live to, to at least 60 for, or something like that, right? Yeah, it sounds crazy when you hear it, but if you get to 25, you're going to make it to 55. You'll yeah, so like, just get to 25. Whatever you do, wear your helmet, seatbelt, floss, uh, don't do don't a drink and drive, drink drugs. Don't just yeah. get to 25. They, well, I, I take that same attitude with any project I, I take on. And I did the kind of research for podcasting. And I realized remarkably low, if you just get past seven episodes, right? Seven. Seven. Like most, most podcasts fail, drop off, quit before episode number seven. So I'm like, I can at least get to seven episodes, right? Can I tell you something I read years and years ago? Um, it was real hard to find uh, good uh, this ages me a little bit, but in the seventies, outside of Earl Nightingale and uh, maybe Zig Ziglar was around and a few others, but most of the uh, the how to do things better stuff were usually books called like the Art of Selling or something like that. It was always you know how to be a better salesperson. Okay, mm -hmm. something always hit me in the head. 
if you're a car dealer and you own a car dealer, you always ignore the first three sales that a car salesman makes. Those don't count because everybody's got a father-in-law, a dad, and a brother, mm-hmm. a mother. A, you know, there's 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 three people. There you got a you got a rich crazy aunt. You got a rich normal aunt. You got to ignore the first three car sales. Mm-hmm. They become a salesman at four, five, six, and yeah. that's when you go in and look at how they do the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. And, isn't it? It's the same. Every every field has that number. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be honest with you. In, in in weightlifting, I've always said for males, it's that two hundred pound clean. Mm. See, you can stiff leg deadlift, reverse curl, probably up to about one ninety five. But to clean two hundred, you have to clean it. Now you're now you're doing a clean, right? Now you're, and it, it's it's interesting you say that because. Weirdly, I probably have a bucket of numbers in my head where I know that suddenly you're, you, by law, um, snatching body weight, uh, <clears throat> you can do that muscle snatch, that ugly stuff. You know, uh, you can probably, I mean, a big, strong guy can show up in the weight room the first time and blow 135 through the roof and maybe 200 uh, mm-hmm. within a few days. But body weight, different world. My friend Cole, we just had this conversation last week about this, you know, about how difficult uh, the body weight press. And I'm not saying, by the way, these aren't standards, folks. These are just examples of when you've kind of hit it. Sure. I've told people before, I mean, the, 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 my back squat number. So I said, you know, I expect to be able to back squat your body weight. And I've had adults, males go, whoa. And I'm like, holy cow, you can't back squat your body weight. Oh my God. <laughs> and and yet you're the you're the online expert. Yeah, yeah. You're the YouTuber. You know, it's this is I love this idea. Maybe we can explore it a little bit further of, you know, just kind of finding out what that maybe that minimum threshold is, identifying that and uh, you know, making that your target in a sense. So yeah, with the podcast, I'm like, huh. Oh. Man, Seth, like I was surprised and I, I might be wrong, but this was the first like statistics that, that that I saw was like most podcasts do not get to episode seven. So it seems like if you cross that threshold, you already have a huge advantage. I'm like, I can if, 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 if I can't get the episode seven, I don't deserve the podcast. It's as simple as that. Well, right. Have you ever gone to a dead a dead blog? Uh, you know, and you it, you'll sometimes I curate a lot of uh, forums <laughs> curate. I go through and I go in their in, in their deep archives and I look at stuff because sometimes seven, eight years ago, someone said, have you read this thing about fermented foods by, you know, Bob Jones? That's where, and that's the first person to talk about it. And then I'll go to the original article and go, boy, this stuff's been around. A while. You know, I do that. Okay. And sometimes people have my blog, you know, uh, you know, hot guy in Denver blog. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll go there. January, three blog posts, February 2, March 1. Done. Yep. 1999, yep. Haven't, haven't upgraded since. Yep. It's, you know? Yeah, it follows a very similar and somewhat depressing pattern. Now, what is that, you know, what is it for nutrition? What is it for exercise? It's like, what's that minimum threshold or that point that most people quit beforehand where you just, you make that your insight, if, as long as I can get past this my chances of success are improved. I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, I, I, I might've mentioned this to you before, but I worked with a young couple. They were trying to get ready for the Olympic games and they wanted some nutritional advice. And so I told them for breakfast, I wanted them to eat a can of green beans for breakfast every day, but it had to have a, a rip lid, a flip lid, because picking up the can opener would have been probably too much work at six in the morning, but flip it, and boil it is it was pretty easy and when i and sometimes i think if i say i want you to eat vegetables at every meal that's a huge holy cow moment for many people mm-hmm. but that would be would that be one or is I that- think, I, yeah i think it is i mean we can uh, let's just kind of build it out i mean like if you ask me how did i get to 500 podcast episodes it's because i got to seven <laughs> right like that definitely isn't like the full answer but it's it is some of the answer if you ask how dan john you know survived past 50 it's because he got to 25 right yeah. <laughs> something, <laughs> something something is true about that right <laughs> yeah uh you're and you're right uh when 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 people ask why i'm 
prolific as a writer. I tell him I write every day. Mm -hmm. Right, because he did 500 to 1,000 words a day for three months or, or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. know, part of what we're talking about is like, what is the, I guess, the minimum that you can kind of build the momentum, right? That's like, where is that where, tipping because, point where you get that kind of critical momentum that is now in your favor? Where it becomes who you are versus something you're going to try. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, ha I don't have a good answer for that in, in everything, but I feel like there are answers to be given and, and worth thinking about. And, and you know what? Uh, if the listeners are interested, maybe that would be a nice little thing. What is in different fields and or even in things like nutrition, and maybe we welcome them to send in their ideas. What is that threshold? Mm -hmm. if, if you have it in a business, like, okay, so we said you uh, car salesman, it's the fourth car. Right. podcast is the eighth podcast right i heard i heard a youtuber who's got a ton of stuff now he says um getting a hundred thousand subscribers was a lot easier than getting my first first one thousand subscribers so that was kind of that was kind of his tip he's like i had to get to the first thousand that was the hardest part and then one thousand to a hundred thousand was you know i don't think he would say it was easy but like it's that it's that before you hit the first thousand is when most people quit um, now I'm not as, as much on YouTube, but I'm like, okay, that's kind of speaking to what we're speaking about. Mm -hmm. Well, I get these emails all the time about my, uh, my Instagram and, and these are not uh, just generator ones, but these are actual about what I'm doing to get such a big following and what I'm doing to get a big following on Instagram is just being myself and just, but, but being consistent, but posting almost every day. Yeah. you you are very consistent and that's really that, that is it. Right. And yeah. Because how, how did I get to 500 podcasts? Well, I consistently did podcasts, right? But I, I knew if I could at least consistently get to seven, something would then start turning into my favor. Um, not like an absolute momentum. Like I definitely have more of a habit after 200 episodes than I do 10. Yes. But I just, I, for me, it was helpful to have it in my mind um, because you know, I, I'm, I'm human. I didn't know if I was going to have a podcast long term yeah. or if anyone was going to care so i wanted to have some target in my mind where i at least need to do this and that was very helpful for me brian uh brian gwaltney the guy who runs dan john university he uh it, will have these conversations there'll be an issue with my podcast or my workshop I, i'm not loud enough i'm not clear enough and when he we get a new piece of equipment uh, or we add something he, it, it, there's this funny 30, 40 minutes where I'm trying to make it part of my routine. So, um, and so sometimes I'll even take notes. For example, it, this is going to sound very l weird when you listen to this, but because of my podcast, we want it to be coming down on me. So I had to figure out that the tripod always has to have the leg pointed at me because when you start bending everything and pointing it down, it would crash on me. And that was really <laughs> so that little one tiny step of that, the triangle the tripod leg points at me before I start the podcast is a step. It's a very small step. And I, I hope you follow my point here. Oh, I do. But that one tiny point of making sure the podcast, uh, the, the tripod leg points at me. Okay. It is pointing at me is a step in my head that I have to go through. Once I go through it once, I write it down, and then all of a sudden that chunks in my brain to be part of the 12 steps it takes me to do a podcast. Yes, yeah. Uh -huh. And then pretty soon we'll add some other thing and I'll say, oh, heck. And I'll have to add this, and then all of a sudden that chunks into, for example, you and I have done this podcast for, for a bit now. And so... Tuesday, I wake up and it's Pat Flynn podcast. That's the chunk I have in my head on Tuesday mornings. Right. And I have cleared off my calendar on Tuesday mornings to have the pod, the Pat Flynn podcast. And when I, there's certain things we do, we have a little dance and ritual we do before we come on the show. Yeah. And then the ritual. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the, getting the, the email start. link. There's a whole ritual, friends. It's the, 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 the pirate mapping of doing this. And your point, and I think it's really important, is one, if you only have seven podcasts, you haven't yet chunked podcast into your head. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's still a hassle to do it. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. And you know, thinking back to, you know, I think some of this will maybe even a lot of it will be person dependent, but for me, when I was first starting out and just wanting to be healthier, the one thing that's, and I forget where I even got this, advice. I got it from somewhere was that I'm just going to not have soda for a while. Right. That was like the one, like that was the threshold that I felt that I needed to, yeah. to, to pass. And I did pass it. And, um, it gave me momentum and it gave me confidence and uh, it, like, obviously I went beyond just that one thing, but that was the one thing for me that was, it seemed like, okay, this is a threshold I can, I can reasonably meet be a little bit challenging for me because I pretty much just drank exclusively. So to, I don't know if I even tasted water until I was like 15, man. Um, isn't, that ter- isn't that terrible? <laughs> right. Like, like I would have soda for breakfast just to give people an example. Um, just, just, just like it, with like waffles and cereal, just insane to give you like, Ooh. like how, how somebody like me grew up in the nineties in front of a television yeah. couldn't have been worse. Right. And interestingly enough, you know, just to tie it back into dental hygiene, you know, a lot, a, a fair amount of it is, is genetic. When I had like a good amount of cavities when I was a kid, I now have not had cavities since I cleaned up my diet, uh, in high school. So yes, I'm not saying that there aren't genetic predispositions, but for me, the nutritional and lifestyle changes made all the difference. Straight, in, straight line back to in, back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which ties into what we talked about last time is like, some things are beyond your control. You accept that you deal with it, but other things you can influence. You, you can, can yeah, very much so. So there's a lot there, but the point was I had some threshold with nutrition starting out that was reasonable. It was challengeable. I hit it. And once I got over that wow. momentum started to build in my favor that I wanted to take on more. And uh, Boy, this, it, and you know what really does tie me back into uh, B.J. Fogg's book, uh, Tiny Habits, where he doesn't think you should, if you want to start exercise, he doesn't believe you should go out and exercise. He believes you should get your training shoes on day one and put them next to the door. On day two, you put your shoes on. On day three, you walk out the door with your shoes and you walk back in the house. And what he, but what, can you see what he's doing here? It's the same concept of doing 500 podcasts. He's, he's chunking. It's a habit. It's a tiny habit, but it's the same idea. But when I talk to somebody, I got to get myself on an exercise program. Well, I'll see you Monday at my house at 930. Monday. What should I wear? Well, I don't know. Workout clothes? Um, like sweats or something? You see how they, I call that pushing back, but they're not pushing back. They don't have the chunk that that those 12 like if you said to me right now literally right now dan let's go out to the park and throw a ball i would run downstairs i know exactly what i would toss on and i'd read back up the stairs okay let's do this because i have chunk i have chunk exercise into my head mm-hmm. this 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 and this yeah now, we might get out to the field with me and i forgot my water bottle and you know what i'll do i'll still hang out because you know i don't need a water bottle Mm-hmm. Or, or yeah, you, you don't have to figure it out, right? That's it. You're probably to the point when you meet someone who's kind of interesting and you say, come on my podcast. And they say, once you probably get the time and day, you probably don't go through a lot of, you probably don't burn up a lot of synapses figuring out to turn on the computer. No, 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 hopefully not. And that's, 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 that's it right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is good. This is good. I like this. Well, it gets uh, me back, you know, a lot of people, when the Beatles hit, when they were originally the silver Beatles, as I understand it, they had eight hour gigs in Germany. Hmm. Wow. And if that's true, I mean, this is, I read this, whether, I mean, true, you know, you know, true. I'm true. not, I'm not a big Beatles guy, so I, I can't fact check that. But my, uh, even if, <laughs> even if it was one hour daily, it doesn't matter. But the idea that you would have to perform for um a long time with three other people is going to make you so when someone says you know by the time you've done that in a week you're 50 hours 60 hours whatever it is a month you know do the math on uh, two three hundred hours and when someone says uh will you play uh cannonball derby by you know the ojs all the person has to do is bump a bump a bump a bump oh yeah i got that because you have it's been it's your eighth podcast that's right yeah been there done yeah. that yeah good stuff all right i'm we're gonna i'm gonna think about that more and 
I'd like to maybe pick the theme up again next week. Why don't you have a podcast on 500 podcasts? Yeah, maybe I should. I'll do a podcast on podcasting. That's, no, sound, and, that's and, and why don't you, in the podcast, go through the, literally, the list of things you have to do, honestly. Uh, and it would be kind of fun to hear you say, okay, number one, I'll get this germ of an idea. Number two, then I'll, and the other day for my podcast, it goes, it probably goes 10 minutes. I read this article. It pissed me off. I picked up the book. <laughs> I got triggered. Yeah. I stuck in some, uh, uh, what are those little cards we used to use? Uh, note cards. I stuck in some note cards so I could easily find the pages I wanted. And I turned the lights on, uh, you know, put this on the click, press the button and I had to sign in press the button and I and I started talking and then at the end I pressed the button and I pressed the button that would send it up into the internet. That's amazing. I'm going to do that, Dan. I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to do a podcast on podcasting. So if people are interested for the behind the scenes of how the magic happens here, uh, stay tuned. I'll try and get that done this week. But remember, it's not just it's it's the it's not just how to do a podcast. It's the 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 intellectual chunking it's the it's for you and me i would argue doing a podcast now is a very it's very easy like you know i made coffee this morning mm -hmm. it's not like i had to this morning i didn't pull out like a little okay coffee fine oh, yeah. pot okay Oop, wrong kind of pot it's just, it's ro it's robotic exactly right and uh so many things in life have to be so and by the way the more the more you can take those important, those things you need to do tasks and make them a bit listy, mm -hmm. you know, pirate mappy, uh, checklisty, that frees your brain up for all the important things in life. And it can be important, yes, about, you know, dealing with your child, uh, uh, helping a friend, all the important things in life, mm -hmm. being creative, which is a very, I don't see how people can be creative if they're constantly, you know, rolling around the mud with all these i agree you need space you need space it. yeah yeah good stuff all right two two more things for you dan before we uh maybe take a question or two one is we're getting towards the end of our 300 swings challenge here so congrats to everyone who's been making it through that and uh when do we want to do our next live um our next live 300 swings workout together you know People are lining up around the building waiting for this one. Okay. Give me a day and I'll, I'll, I'll give you, not only I'll give you one, let's, let's, let's plan two or three, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah. But was, just yeah. Give, give me about, give me about uh, 24 hours. I got to just work on it. But there's yeah, no, that's cool. I just want to, I want to do like a, a send off to everyone who did the challenge, a live send off Absolutely. To you and we'll do some. Swing, what, we'll what, some uh, what day are they finishing by? Um, a lot, some will be, depending if they really got after it, some will finish today, more tomorrow. And then, you know, we have some people just kind of started, but within next week, most will be. Okay. Done. Good. okay. Yeah. Good. So I've got, that'll be fine. That'll be no problem at all. I'll, I'll yeah. make that work. Good. And I'll, I'll announce that for sure. And we'll do okay. a live stream and, uh, we'll take some questions. You can swing some bells with us. It'll be a good, a good, right. a good time. A good old time. All right. Okay. Very good. My next one uh, is just, uh, what is, what is, uh, what is your training right now? What have you been, what have you been working on? What have you been doing? We always like to hear what you've been experimenting with in the weight room. So give well, us the update. Last week was that uh, the three weeks a year I, I deload because I do, do the double red blood donation. And <clears throat> that's when I go to the dentist and that's when I, any doctor visits, I try to get them all in one week. Just batch it. I love it. Yeah. And uh, what's nice is, you know, like I, I said to somebody after the third day of sitting in a chair with someone poking and prodding at you, you know, <laughs> I'm glad I separated out. So yesterday, uh, I got back to my normal routine. Uh, it's uh, basically, if you read my article, Easy Strength for Fat Loss, you, you would see the same roots. I'm experimenting a little bit right now, as I like to, since I don't really have any. Uh, so yesterday I was doing, uh, I did hypertrophy, uh, a push, pull, hinge, squat, uh, and a fairly long walk with ankle weights and uh, hand weights. Uh, practice some hanging uh, bent knee reds. But the reason uh, I focus so hard on um, basic uh, hypertrophy three days a week and the mobility between sets is, you know, I'm 63 and the hypertrophy is so important to where I'm at now. Uh, 
you know, January was a very good month for me. Uh, I lost, I, and I, folks, I wasn't exactly, you know, Bobby obese or anything, but you know, I, the, the, the swing challenge, I got, I lost 14 pounds, uh, at one time. It's tough. Wow. Uh, I backed off, I backed off on the alcohol, which was probably as big a factor, but I also have to throw in the fact that I was training twice a day. Um, the, I, I was, I was, you know, I was hard and heavy on the sauerkraut and kimchi, of course, mm -hmm. which for me seems to help with my, uh, uh, digestion. Are you still making it? Are you still growing that stuff? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a really interesting caraway seed one I have in there. Ooh. Unfortunately, uh, so I said, it, you just had to start a little online shop for some of that stuff. Dan's yeah, and, crown. And, and, and fortunately I let it, it, when it filled up with water, I overreacted and, and took some of the liquid off. And so now the finished product, it got a little drier than I wanted it, but it's still, it's still better. I'm surprised how little salt you need in good sauerkraut. Hmm. Um, in a big two, uh, is it two quarts, whatever, I don't know, but it's big, okay? I only need two or three teaspoon, tablespoons of salt and to, to make it. Whereas if you buy it at the store, I, I think I mentioned this when I first started this uh, sauerkraut and kimchi stuff, I, I bought the brand that was in a can or a jar on the hmm. shelf and I start working out and the sweat would, hurt my eyes so much I'd have to pull over and figure out a way to get the salt out and then I realized that it would they were using the salt to make it survive on a shelf without refrigeration um, gentle listener if you're too lazy to make your own uh, if you go to most um, we have a place called sprouts here I'm sure it would be the same with the, the higher end place like a Trader Joe's or whatever is get the go to the, the refrigerated sauerkrauts and and, and uh, kimchi and eat those you want the refrigerated ones yep. so the things are still alive okay there you go yeah i've been um <clears throat> you know the brand bubbies uh, yeah i recognize it yeah yeah that's that's a, a little expensive so i'd probably do much better just to uh do what you're doing there dan yeah and, uh, mm -hmm. um and then uh you know yeah i'm trying you know i'm still right now the focus is the the heavy hands and the hypertrophy uh, the mobility. Those are the, th the three things now. That'll get me. And until we get out of the winter, which really doesn't even look like one this year, uh, I'll probably just stick with the hypertrophy mobility, you know, walking. Cool. Cool. Shall we turn to some questions? I love the idea. All right. This one, first one comes from gentle listener, Timothy. He says, I've been training consistently for three years. My goal is to be lean and obtain that athletic lean look. I would say with clothes on, I'm almost there, but without clothes, I'm still quite flabby, especially on the tummy. My question, <laughs> sorry, my dog's barking. Uh, my question is, how do I achieve the lean athletic look? Well, I mean, I'll give the answer that from my world and then Patrick will give the answer from your world. Uh, if you want to look like an athlete, you should, what would be the phrase I want? Train like an athlete. I would suggest uh, Getting becoming a member of United States track and field and going to some track meets and running the 400 meters. And trust me, you're going to say, what about diet? And I'm going to say, you don't have to worry about diet anymore because if you eat badly, we'll all know exactly what foods you ate uh, that caused you to eat badly. Um, if you want to look athletic, I think you have to be athletic. Uh, you have to get, when you sprint 400 meters as hard as you can, or depending on your conditioning, but at the 200 meter line, the 300 meter line, the impact of lactic acid in your body will be so overwhelming, you'll never ever wonder what it takes to burn fat again. It's it's not walking on a treadmill looking at Oprah. Uh, that was actually that's a cliche from a long time ago. Um, uh, it, it is getting that lactic acid threshold so high that your body doesn't even know how to respond. You feel like a bear heave. But go ahead, Pat. No disagreement from me. I think uh, we've done numerous episodes on uh, on that all kind of play this theme of e easy strength for fat loss. Yeah. Uh, um, and I can't think of a, a better approach, honestly, for most people most of the time. So I would encourage uh, Timothy and any other interested um, listeners to look, just search the episode, Easy Strength for Fat Loss on the Pat Flynn Show. Sure. That'll pop up. We had a pretty 
uh, detailed conversation about awesome. that of the strength practice, occasional complexes, lots of walking and some nutrition yeah. tips. I think that Timothy said he doesn't look good in clothes. Is that right? Did I get that right? Or is he's, he no, I, it's the opposite way. He says with clothes on, he's got that sort of um, a lean yeah. look he's having for, but once the shirt comes off, he's the got truth, that. The truth is exposed. Yeah, that's boy, is that the way it's interesting? But if you go off the rack for clothes, you will notice that uh, if you are lean and muscular, you don't look very good. Uh, if, if on the men's side, oh, I say, yeah, no, if I most people, I just look skinny with clothes on, yeah, but yeah. I take the shirt off, then then people know <laughs> that's right. That's why I'm always taking my shirt off at uh, weddings and funerals so mm -hmm. people know I work on it. Yes. That's right, they got to know because they yeah. have to know. They have to know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. hopefully that helped, Timothy. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be diet. Oh, well, no, it's going to be food choices. It's going to be the kitchen, and you just gotta. And I all. And the other thing I got to tell you: don't let it get worse. <laughs> don't let it get worse. And one other thing I would say, Pat, just to give Timothy the full, all of his money's worth for free. Um, it could it, look around your family tree, and if there are pockets of fat that everybody in your family has, well, congrats to you and. I don't want to say that you need surgical intervention. Congrats to you. <laughs> but you, it just might be, you know, when everybody in the family has a flat butt and muffin tops and you have it. That's, Take better parents, dude. Yeah, you should have you, you known, known better. Choose wiser with the parents, yeah. Uh, and it, and it, if and I, I have told people this, and Patrick, you can disagree with my point, but if you are of a certain age and a certain, you can afford it, Sometimes a surgical intervention might be something if you have, uh, you can disagree with you hundred percent, but right. if this is an issue. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say two things to that. One is that it's, it's better to, to face reality than to live in delusion. And if there's just something that's going on that, uh, you know, for whatever reason, genetic, environmental, uh, like for example, some guys often write in that they got like the man boob stuff going on. And some of that is just a specific tissue that like the only way to get rid of that is certain, and a lot of bodybuilders do that. And it's a sort of result of various hormone changes yeah. that can manipulate the tissue that it's, it's not just something that is removed. So that's why uh, bodybuilders with they're taking steroids or whatever yeah. um, will just have the surgery to get that removed. Now I want to say two things to that one is that yes, it's better to, to know what is going on. And if that's the case, and realize, okay, I'm I'm just going to be spinning my wheels here if I try to, uh, you know, treat something that that uh, with with one method that is only treatable by another method. Uh, that's 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 good that you understand that. The second thing, however, is if you've got like a little pinch of uh, love handle fat, and that bothers you so much to the point that you just can't go on living without a ten thousand dollar surgery. I think we need to have a deeper conversation about priorities in life, you know, and, and probably it's just more of the second point that I would want to want to focus on. You know what I'm saying, Dan? And, and I'm not necessarily saying yes or no to plastic surgery or, you know, surgical intervention, but I, I will work with people sometimes and then I'll meet their brother or whatever. And I'll be like, you know, this, this, this is your deep, this is, this is deep. And if it's that big a deal, you know, I, I when I saw my brother Richard and I, and I, I know that I've broken my nose six times. I know that because I can remember all the blood. Um, but then I looked at his ugly face and I, sh and I thought, damn it, I look just like him. <laughs> you know, like there's, there's degrees here. Like if you get like a terrible accident, your nose and face gets messed up, then like, of, co of course, like, yeah. You know, of, of, of course, but like if you're always so dissatisfied with every aspect of your body, right, then, then I think that there's actually something much deeper that needs to be addressed. Like, because yeah. I don't think, because then it's going to be like you said, we see this in Hollywood, right? One surgery is never enough, right? And then it's oh, another. And then, and then you just, you just build this, this identity of this idea of sense worth into what you see in the mirror. And I think that is a very dangerous place to enter into we're probably going way far off the question at this point but i think it's worth mentioning oh but this this is why we have our weekly podcast is you know i'll say something like that and you'll 
and you'll take that co concept and go, okay. For example, and I, you know, I, I hate to pick on Meg Ryan, but uh, I've seen some pictures of her in the last few years with all the excess, excessive plastic surgeries. And it's like, oh dear God, you know, um, uh, and she's actually, I mean, I hate to say better or worse. I mean, this is no judgment, but I, I, there are some, there are some Hollywood stars who they hit a certain, it, it, and it's the business and it's the, it, I, we all understand it. It's celebrity and it's tabloids and I get it, but you get to the point where, um, the, the young woman who was in psycho when she retired decided to just not worry anymore. And I saw a picture of her. Um, is it Janet Lee? Um, uh, oh, yeah. like, and I saw a picture of her, you know, this is years ago, but she had just let herself show her hair silvered out and she was absolutely lovely mm -hmm. because she didn't decide to, you know, use you know a nuclear weapon to deal with with you know right with the, with the I natural look. inevitable process of it yeah. right and just and just like look dan me and you are both irish we know what that means right we're, we're probably not going to be strolling down any 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 runway any platform with some some yeah. good look show <laughs> any point <laughs> in the near future right <laughs> I, I got this uh i was at my cousin's house about two years ago in these he has these pictures of these two round faced, you know, people. And I'm, and those, it's my grandparents. And it's like, God, I'm turning my, I thought I was turning my parents. No, I'm turning my grandparents, you know, <laughs> Please, you're all. and like, you just got to learn to, again, this is some things are in your control. Some things aren't. And the things yeah. that aren't, you know, learn to embrace them, learn to, learn to laugh about them a little bit, yeah, yeah. you know, learn to laugh about them. Cause sometimes if you don't laugh, you will cry and better to laugh, right? Yeah. Better to laugh. Very good. All right, let's uh, see if we can squeeze one more in here. This comes from Gentle Listener, Rob. Hello, Rob. Hey, Rob. This one is aimed at you, Dan. He says, Dan, what are some sled dragging workouts for improving endurance? I've seen the sled used as a sprint training tool, but have you used it for longer distances? And, and if so, how far do you go? Mark, Mark Dwight had a really interesting thing he did. He put a rope around a weight belt and then a tire around at, on the end. And he had his guys run hills with it. And the idea is that the, once you get going, the tire would catch on rocks and twigs and trees, and you get that braking action. Uh, he would have them go for up to a mile with that. I'm sure that uh, nature really appreciated all that. Um, is sled dragging a endurance workout? That would be the question I'd, I'd ask you to, to kind of run around. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, Rob, I, and I have to be careful because I don't know where you live, but you know, like in a place like here in Utah, Colorado, some of the other states, Vermont, running hills would, you know, like run up a hill and then have a little, we have one over here at the park with that Mike Brown and I do. It's a hard hill and then about three quarters of a mile walk, hard hill, three quarters of a mile walk. This is a summer workout, obviously, because of the, I mean, you can't. I don't know if I want to be spreading up a muddy or snowy hill. Right, right. I'll probably just get dirty, but at my age, you just, you're allowed to think things through. But really, I, I would suggest that if you do decide to use a sled drag as an endurance thing, then I would say hard sled drag, release it, then either, either an easy, I hate to call it a jog, but a stride, sure. a run, yeah. And then come back to it and incorporate. Like so you have the big hit, and then the it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like interval running, but with the sled. I like that a lot. Yeah, cool. Hey Dan, sorry to be abrupt here. I forgot I have another uh, appointment oh. right at ten. But real quick, give us the what's going on, Dan John University. Anything coming down the pipeline you want to make? A, a... Well, uh, the forum is the best forum on the internet. There, the I, end. The... I just can't get over. It. We've got professors from all over the world. We've got people who really care. It, it's just such a kind place. The workout generator, if you haven't used it, use it. Okay, go. All right, beautiful. Dan, as always, such uh, such an honor. Thank you for so much. 500 episodes, thanks in large part to Dan. I mean, we've. I, I'll have to go count and see how many we've done at this point, but it's getting up there. So 10, maybe 11? Maybe, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so seriously, thank you and uh, see you next week. I'm looking forward to it already. All right, Dan, see you then.